Joanne, and welcome back to Flourish. I've got some of my great friends with me again here today, and I'm so excited for you to hear what we're gonna talk about. Because you know what? We have found all of us, you included, I'm sure, that life is hard. And naturally, we are always trying to make our circumstances better, um, trying to push the difficulties away and pull in the things that bring us joy. Um, but what we're gonna talk about today is the difference between things that we expect and things that we hope for. And what is the difference between those two things? I'm gonna read my notes to make sure I get this just right. So join me as we talk about this very important topic, victory over unmet expectations. So we all have expectations of what we think our life should be. And sometimes those expectations are so subtle, we don't even realize that we have them until it doesn't go the way we want it to. And then they stand out in a glaring way. Expectations often put the burdens on other people, while hope puts those expectations aside. So we're gonna explore this a little bit more. If that sounds confusing to you, hopefully we'll be able to explain that to you by the time this program's over. You'll understand it in a fresh way and you'll be able to live a life more victoriously in the Lord Jesus Christ. So Laura, Candy, Angel, welcome today. Thanks, Joanne. Our Thank favorite place to start, of course, is always with the Bible, with Scripture. So let's start by reading some Bible passages. All right, I've got Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Mm, love that verse. So good. Yeah. So good. Well, I have one out of Psalms, Psalm 147, 11. This says, the Lord delights in those who fear him, mm -hmm. who put their hope in his mm. unfailing love. I love that. Yeah. Mm, thank you, Candy. And then I have proper, Proverbs chapter 10, verse 28. The prospect of the righteous is joy, but the hopes of the wicked come to nothing. Mm. We're convicting. gonna talk, yes, it's very <laughs> convicting. And that, that verse can be a little bit difficult to understand too. Right. So we're gonna talk about that verse a little bit later in greater, te in greater detail. But what I wanna start with now is defining what is, what is hope and what is expectations. Let's talk about that a little bit. So again, I'm gonna read my notes because I don't wanna mess up. So an expectation is the act or the state of expecting something with anticipation, with assurance. It's a strong belief that something will happen. Hope, on the other hand, is when we want something to happen. We cherish the desire with an anticipation of the fulfillment. But again, it's something we want, not something we are expecting to happen. So the difference between hoping and expecting. Let's look at that. Having hope means that you're trusting the process. Mm -hmm. Having an expectation means that you're trusting in the results. You see the difference? Mm -hmm. The process is one thing that can stretch us, that can grow us, but expecting the results to be a certain way, that's very limiting. Some more definitions. Having hope means that the future is uncertain. Having an expectation means that you are trying to predetermine the future. That's a dangerous place yeah. to be. That's a slippery ground. Yeah. Having hope is an action of humility. Mm. Let me say that again. Having hope is an action of humility. Mm. On the other hand, having an expectation is an act of pride. Mm. Ouch. Yes. Again, convicting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Couple more things. Having hope does not disappoint in the end because you're not expecting a certain outcome, but having an expectation often falls short. Having hope, I love this one, having hope helps us acknowledge that God knows what's best for us, while having an expectation often indicates that you know best. Mm. Ouch again, right? Yep. Super convicting. Yes. Mm -hmm. wow. Having hope produces a life of faith. I want to be a woman of faith. Yes. Don't y'all yes. want to be yes. women of faith? Yes. You? So having hope helps us grow and mature in our faith. On the other hand, having an expectation produces a life of entitlement. I don't know how it is in your country, but here in America, oh my gosh, we have so many people that leave, live lives of entitlement, yeah. uh, especially the younger generation. 
And that is, that is a reflection of expecting a specific outcome. Um, okay, the last one, expectations often put the burden on others. Ooh, your spouse, your family, your friends, your coworkers, even God. On the other hand, when we have hope, it puts that burden aside. So hopefully that clarifies for you the difference between expecting something and hoping something. So Angel, realizing these differences yeah. between hope and expectations, how have you see this, seen this played out in your own life personally? Yeah, well, I have learned the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a daughter who has, uh, is not following Christ. And of course, that's a big heartache for me. And I pray for her regularly. Ten years ago, she stopped following Christ. But God mm -hmm. has given me promise after promise after promise that she's going to come back and help build his church. Well, when he first started giving me that promise, like the first five years, uh -huh. I had, oh, it's going to happen now. It's going to happen this way. It's going to happen that way. I was putting my expectations on how it was going to happen. Finally, after five years of misery, because <laughs> I would get so disappointed yeah, yeah. afterwards, the Lord helped me let go and hope in his faithfulness. So now I wait on the Lord's faithfulness. Wow. That's a great wow. example. Thank you. Yeah. Great and example. it's been the biggest faith builder of my life. So let me ask you this question. If you hadn't walked through that, right. what do you think your faith would be? I don't know. I actually don't. And I actually have thanked my daughter for helping grow my faith. Mm, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Affirming for her. Wow. I love that. How about you, Laura? I know you've got something great to share. Oh my goodness. This was so, <laughs> this was really convicting the spirit revealed a lot. And mm. so um, the question is, do I find myself hoping or expecting? And as I look throughout my life, it's been expecting, mm. not really hoping. And it's been with the relationships of the of three men that are near and dear to me throughout my life, mm -hmm. my father, my husband, and my son. And... Um, I just, when I was growing up, my father was a self-made man. He was an entrepreneur and he really had control of his life. And he just raised me and my siblings with confidence, with assurance, with security, mm. financial and biblical. He did introduce me to Christ. Mm. I was raised in the church, but he made a lot of promises and toward the end of his life, he got Parkinson's. <laughs> and mm -hmm. so with Parkinson's, you get delusions. Mm -hmm. And right. so, you know, in the end, kind of things fell short. Right. You know what Those I'm saying? But I was so blessed. Yeah. So um, that was my dad. My husband, so with how I was raised with my by my father, I shifted with my husband with love, mm -hmm. with love. Um, not so much a savior, but kind of a stopgap, um, kind of a savior and a provider. And with my husband, um, <laughs> that, that we had difficulties, we had difficulties. And so I'll never forget telling my husband, I wasn't raised this way. I wasn't raised, <laughs> I was not raised this way. And so I just look at some of your key points. So I had the expectation that produces a life mm. of entitlement. Mm. Wow. Again, with my dad, I had an expectation that fell short. And so I have a son. I have a beautiful son. I just have one son, two girls, and he's gifted. He's gifted in many ways. And one of the ways was through athletics. And he was a star football player, uh, started varsity his sophomore year. And what happened is I, he became an idol in my mm, life. Mm -hmm. He was front and center. He was going to play college football, maybe professional. Mm. And in one play, he broke his tibia and it, it was over. So mm. that expectation for me was I put the burden on him. Mm. I put a huge yeah, yeah. burden on him. And then, of course, I, I was let down. So as you... 
with all of this kind of coming together at the same time about 10 years ago, I grieved. I had a lot of loss. I went into therapy and I just had to grieve what I perceived as losses. And what happened was the spirit and Christ started focusing me on him mm. and who he is. Mm -hmm. So my dad's the past, my husband's the present, and my son's the future. Well, Jesus reminded me, I, I'm the I am. Mm -hmm. yes. I'm the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, and I'm not yes. going to let you down. Wow. So he helped mm -hmm. me with my display, dis, displaced expectations and turn the hope into Christ. Wow. And so, um, so when I put my father, my daddy, he was my father, Abba, but God is Abba, my father. He, God, the father is the protector. He is my rock. He is my cornerstone yeah, yeah, foundation, right, right. not my daddy on earth that he gave me. And he's a capstone. Mm -hmm. And so with Jesus, he's love. He's the fulfillment mm -hmm. of love. Right. He is my savior. He is my Lord and savior. And then with my son, who I was being glorified through him, God is glory. Yes. I need, I get glory through God. So I just had such wonderful revelation. And um, wow. I'm just so and glad to lay it all that down. This, this program in preparing helped me for that. Wow, praise the Lord, Laura. Had to lay all those things down, switch those expectations to hope in, as you said, your God, that's beautiful. Thank you for sharing your heart. Mm -hmm. Well, Candy, sense. how about you? As you've grown in your faith through the years, have you found that you, as, as you've gotten deeper in your faith, have you moved more from expectations to hope? Do you see that pattern in your life? You know, I do, Joanne. And something, one of the points that you were reading earlier about hope doesn't disappoint. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I definitely can tell that if I am hoping and trusting in Jesus, I'm not nearly as disappointed mm -hmm. as when I am trying to put an expectation on another person. Mm -hmm usually my spouse mm -hmm. or myself mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. uh, someone. And so that's been very um, evident to me. I also want to say here, this wasn't really in the words, but I think control and expectations mm. are just like this. Yes. Oh my gosh, yes. yes. I, I mean, I just think if you're expecting something, you're trying to control the situation. Amen. Absolutely. So that was also something that's really, you know, stood out to me. And as far as, you know, kind of trying to transfer most of the time from expectation to hope, it's a process for me. And each time that I, I give a situation to, to Christ, to God, and I just say, this is yours, my trust increases mm -hmm. because his answers are always better than mine. Right? Even, yeah, if, right. even if they don't happen immediately mm -hmm. or the way I think they're going to, they're always better. Wow. So, yeah, That's I awesome. love that through all your life experiences with your family. Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. Praise God. I like what you said about um, expectations really does have to do with control. Uh, mm -hmm. So if you're a person that wants control in your life, and there's some things we all want control yeah. over, gosh, it's time to examine our hearts to see who are we putting expectations on. Mm -hmm. That's not fair. You know, one of the things about putting expectations on people is they have no idea what we are expecting of them. So of course they're going to fall short. Very true. <laughs> I've heard a saying that don't expect out of people what you can only get from God. Ooh, yeah. amen, mm -hmm. amen. Yes. And then oftentimes we expect more out of people than we would ever expect of ourselves. Right. So we want them to do more than even what we are able yeah. to do. Yeah. Not fair mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, switching tracks a little bit, um, we have a great verse that we want to read for you. You know, again, scriptures always are, our barometer, it's our anchor, it's our hope. Let's turn to the pages of God's word. And Candy, you've got Romans 15, 13. Yes. This is a favorite verse for all of us. If you're not familiar with this one, pull out your camera, you know, take a picture of it, write it down in, you know, in your notes, circle it in your Bible. Romans 15, 13 yes. says, now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you will abound in hope Mm. I love that. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm. 
Love that I want verse. to abound in hope. Amen. Right. <laughs> right. And read that last part. By the power of who? <laughs> the Holy Spirit. Not by the power of Joanne. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the power Thank of you. angel Thank or you. any of us, right? <laughs> Not by your power. By the power mm -hmm. of the living God. Wow. That's where our hope comes from. And when we put our hope in Him, mm -hmm. it produces two things. Mm -hmm. Joy and peace. Yes. Wow. That's good. Yeah, yes. Angel, you've That's got really a really good. cool story about oh gosh, yeah, that so, you can relate you to. Know, we were talking when we were preparing for this. When your hope deferred, like when your heart gets sick because something happens mm -hmm. and you think it can't be fixed. Well, so this is a a little different story than we've told. But we were, I was vacationing with my family in Brooklyn, um, New York, which is like Tehran. Mm -hmm. Big city. Big city. Mm -hmm. And I have a, you know, diamond ring. And we were, we had been gone from the hotel for two hours at this point. We sit down in some store and I look down and the ring, the diamond is gone. I mean, gone. And I'm just sick, <sighs> sick, sick, sick. And so I, and the first thought is it's going to take a miracle to get this thing back. Is this the whole ring or just the stone? No, just the stone. Oh my the goodness. The actual stone. In New York. In New York, middle of New Ow. York, pre-COVID. So it's crowded. Every, we've been a million places. And wow. so the first thing I think is it's going to take a miracle to get this back. Immediately I hear the Lord say, and do you believe I love you enough to do that? <laughs> and the next second I say, not really, but yes, I believe it helped my unbelief. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then I, te you know, text people say, please pray, please play. And so we, we retrace our steps. We talk to people. People are being so sweet mm -hmm. and trying to help. And I, I call the restaurant, um, and we had left the hotel. They were going to clean our room. So, I'm, but all of a sudden, it dawns, it pops into my head, which now I know is the Holy Spirit voice of God. Call the hotel. So I call the hotel. Little Francis at the front desk answers the phone, <laughs> and he says, "I'm on it. I will go check your room." And he <laughs> runs down there. And they were again supposed to have cleaned the room. Two hours later, they had not gone in. The maids were about to go in. He calls me like three minutes later and says, I found the diamond just on incredible. the bathroom floor. <laughs> it is now safely on your counter. Wow. Oh, my, oh my gosh. I call that a miracle. Because it is a miracle. The bathroom floor was like a marble floor. There were towels all over the place. Mm. The maids hadn't come in. They were supposed to come in. Mm. All the little factors. It was wow. incredible. But here's the, even the better part of the story. Although that was amazing. Because <laughs> FYI, I didn't have my diamond insured. Now it is, okay? <laughs> so um, as I'm processing with the Lord when I get home and I'm journaling, because when God does something, it's more than just that thing. It's far reaching. Mm -hmm. so right. Like, so many layers. What? Why in the world did you do this? Yes, I know you love me. And oh my gosh, what a love gift. But he linked it to this legacy of this promise with my daughter about being married to him and the legacy that will carry on. So it was just another stamp on that promise. A reminder. Yes. While you're waiting, you yes. earlier said you've been praying for five years. Now you're up to 10 years. Yes. And God reminds yes. you, I have not forgotten yes. that promise. And my daughter's with me when that miracle happens. Happened. To witness mm. Wow. Mm. You yeah. know what that reminds me of? It reminds me of the story in the Bible of the lost sheep. It says, mm. you know, there's a shepherd with 90 or the 100 sheep. One of those sheep wanders away. Jesus leaves the 99 together so that he can go off looking for the one. Mm. Not only is he looking for your lost diamond, he is looking for your lost daughter, promising to mm -hmm. bring that one lost sheep back mm. to his heart. Okay, so we've got a little bit of time here. Angel, tell us another layer of that story, the significance of that diamond. Yeah, well, oh, that, that, oh yeah, it goes on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what? Oh yeah, okay. So this diamond just happens to be the diamond that my husband gave me in our 20th year anniversary when we got remarried. And uh, there's other episodes we've talked about this, but um, God restored our marriage. Uh, 18 years, I was going to leave him. I thought our marriage was over. God restored it at 20 years. We got our marriage vows renewed. And I, I, I say that's when our spiritual marriage happened, mm, when God beautiful. really joined us together as one. So it had extra significance. Yeah. yeah. And God protected it. Yes, mm. he did. He didn't allow you to lose that. You know, God is a God that cares about every aspect of our life, all the intimate details. 
to you, maybe a diamond doesn't ring doesn't mean much, but that mm -hmm. had such significance, right. not only with God restoring your marriage, but God bringing back your daughter. One day that's yeah. still going to happen. Mm -hmm. And every time you look at your diamond ring, mm -hmm. that's your reminder. Mm -hmm. That is your reminder that yeah. that promise will be fulfilled. Well, I'm it's like sure the stones of remembrance yes. in the Bible, right? Exactly. Say that again. I probably uh, cut you off. Talk well, about no, that. well, I cut you off. But there's a there's scripture in the Old Testament about stones of remembrance is to remember what God has done yes. in your life. Our yeah. own spiritual history, and mm -hmm. oftentimes He gives us tangible things that yes. we can remember um, the promises that He's given us. Well, you know, I'm sure you have expectations in your life, just as all of us have. You also have hopes. Our prayer that for all of us and for you, as God grows you in your faith, is that you, as you learn to trust Him, that you'll recognize the difference between a hope and an expectation. In fact, Candy, I don't know if you're, we're going to remember this. I, I may ask you a question. You're going to not remember what I'm saying. But when we were talking earlier, we were saying we want to be sure to say this about, do you remember what I'm talking about? We wanted to be sure to connect um, our little barometer. What is something when we oh, yeah. realize, uh-oh, oh, I am. Well, yes, yes. I, I said to you that any time I find myself frustrated or worried, I know that I'm not hoping. Mm. I am expecting. I've got an expectation on so somebody. Good. <laughs> Might be me. It's usually my spouse. Yeah, <laughs> that is so but, yeah. good. So when we're worried or frustrated, yes. examine our heart. We may be leaning more into an expectation than we are in a hope. And remember, the hope goes back to we trust our God who knows better mm -hmm. than we know. Yes. This has been wow. awesome. Does anybody have anything else you want to share before we go well, to scripture I, again? What yeah. I thought about, my little counselor brain said that when, we, it, when we're trying to control outcomes, we're also creating stress for ourselves. So not only does yes. it get us, well, and so there's that anger Amen. and frustration, right? <laughs> because that's, that's kind of a, a, a fragrance of stress mm -hmm. when we get yes. stressed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So good. Mm -hmm. Having Angel on our ministry team, who's a counselor, adds such depth and mm -hmm. such, oh, yeah. love that, love that. Well, let's turn our hearts back to scripture um, and let's read some verses that they're going to be shined up on your screen at the end and you can look at them. Candy, you've got a great verse from Romans 8:18. 8, yes. Romans 8:18 8, says, I consider that our present sufferings mm. are not worth comparing with the glory, the glory that will be revealed in us. Right? Wow. So whatever your struggle is, Whatever that circumstance that is causing you to expect, to expect a different outcome, one day as a follower of Jesus, we know we have eternity ahead of us. Mm -hmm. So again, that's convicting if you don't know Jesus. Today is your day yes. to give your life to Him. Yes. Would you let Him fill that emptiness with His glory? He's longing to do that. Mm -hmm. Another verse. I love that. I claim that verse in a time of my life that oh. you just read. Um, another one, which mm. is a beautiful promise, um, and talk about relying on hope. Hope of assurance is the last book of the Bible, Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 through 4. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men, mm -hmm. and he will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. Mm -hmm. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, there will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. Mm. Amen. Wow. Now that is hope. Yes. That is hope. And you know, friends, when we put our hope in Jesus, then our expectations align with God's promises. We know that this is going to happen one day because God is a promise keeping God. Right. So when our expectations are in that, that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. mm. Angel, wow. you have a verse? To I do. Um, and I really relate to this because this is the faith that God has built in me, the hope in him, because I've, I've told people, even if I don't see it, I know Haley yes. is coming back mm. to Christ. So Amen. Hebrews 11, 13 through 16 mm -hmm. 
All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better mm -hmm. country, mm -hmm. a heavenly one. Mm -hmm. Therefore, mm -hmm. God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. Mm -hmm. Such hope. Mm -hmm. What we have to look forward to as followers yeah. of Jesus. And a verse I'd love to read to you is from John 3.36. And in this passage, it's Jesus speaking. He says, whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever rejects the Son will not see life for God's wrath remains on them. Have you accepted Jesus as your son? Excuse me, as your savior. <laughs> come out right. <laughs> son of man. Yes, that's right. <laughs> oh my gosh, have you accepted Jesus as your savior? If you've been longing to fulfill or to fill that empty void in your heart, if you feel thirsty, if you feel hungry, it's Jesus who is beckoning you to mm. himself. Pray with us now and give your life to him. So why don't we close in prayer, Laura? Yeah. Would you start? I'd be so honored. Thank, thank you. you. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this theme today, which is victory over unmet expectations. Mm -hmm. May all the viewers embrace a holy expectation for the internal future God has planned for them mm -hmm. as his children. Mm -hmm. And Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for the conviction you gave me mm -hmm. while yes, preparing Lord. for this. And yes. I repent, I yes. repent mm -hmm. because yes. I mm -hmm. threw the expectations I had with the men I loved. I was becoming self-centered yes. and not God-centered. Mm -hmm. I repent of that. Thank you for convicting me. I praise you for that. I praise you for the treasures that you continuously reveal to us. Mm -hmm. yes, Lord. In your precious name, amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, Lord, I just thank you so, so much for this opportunity to, to reach out to our friends yes, that Lord. we haven't met yet, but we pray mm -hmm. one day we will meet. Mm -hmm. And I just pray for each one of them that they will embrace your hope, Jesus, mm -hmm. your hope, and you, they will rely on you and not on self-focused expectations, yes. mm -hmm. that they will take their eyes off of their own situations and just mm -hmm. turn their eyes mm -hmm. to yes, you, Lord, Lord as you are the answer. Mm -hmm. And I offer this in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Amen. And Lord, I just pray in agreement. I just ask you to bring great clarity mm -hmm. to those watching in the hearts that are quickened between hope and expectation. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Ah, Jesus, we love you. We worship you. We pray for our sisters, our brothers on the other side of the ocean. Be close to them. Draw them near your, to your heart. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, may the Lord, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Thank you for joining us today here at Flourish. We can't wait for you to join us next time. And we, we love you. And we can't wait. When do we want to see you all at the throne? Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye. And thank you, friends. <laughs>